guys. We're here, we got the 2016 Model X. Just wanted to give some insights, some thoughts, uh, just sort of a real world review versus a more statistical breakdown of what's changed and what's different. Just a, a real observation on how this car is, how it looks, how it drives, how it operates, how it feels, just from a real world casual perspective. Uh, and then compare this again to the 2018 that we have and then a 2020 as well. Okay, so let's just get ready to break it down, just looking at the exterior. Visually, I'll make the caveat to say that this is a loaner car, so part of the wear and tear is part of it just being a loaner and then not you know, really paying too much attention to it. But others are actual uh, defects in the parts and how they have needed to evolve them over time. Okay, so I'm not gonna pay too much attention to the panel gaps, things like that, like you see on the door, but I am gonna just make note of, of some things that I observe, okay? So this is a relatively early VIN, 1700s in the VIN, so 2016, 1700s in the VIN, just to preface that. Exterior-wise, everything else seems pretty similar to what we've seen before in terms of uh, the car itself, the fit and finish. Again, there's some panel gaps, panel alignment gaps here uh, that you'll see right there. Uh, that's not sort of indicative of the build itself and breaking down over time, but more so just the fact that it's a loner. Because this is a 2016 model, we have the active spoiler here, which went away, I think, 2017. Uh, you have the active spoiler, goes up and down as you unlock the car. That's pretty cool, I actually like that. Uh, but it goes up and down accordingly, all right? Uh, there were some issues in terms of safety because it could come down, it could clamp someone's finger, and there was no real safety mechanism. And I don't think they wanted to put in the overhead to develop something like that, so they just sort of got rid of it, uh, to my understanding. All right, otherwise, everything else looks the same. Pretty much identical car, 90D, just like ours. Has a cool license plate of X90, that's pretty cool. But just taking a look at the car itself, if I was to go ahead and start opening up the doors, you'll start to see what those look like. I'll open up the left and I'll open up the right accordingly. Uh, and they'll open up full height. This is actually a seven seater set up here. It's on the pedestals, these automated pedestals that have motors in them to allow the seats to go forward and back. Uh, and you can adjust them manually. Uh, they're also perforated leather as well. Uh, this is, I think, more, more, more so real leather than the faux or synthetic Tesla leather that we have here. But it's nice. Uh, it's different. It's a different look to it. Uh, feels good, but it does feel more like leather than, than our seats. And again, the difference could just be the material used for the black versus white. Our seats are white. Uh, but I've also sat in ones where the seats were black and they feel a little bit different than these. So I'm not sure if these are truly uh, the vegan material or if they just feel different because they're perforated, I'm not sure about that. Uh, but they are just perforated in the back, uh, but not cooled in the back. They are perforated and ventilated in the front. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And again, you can sort of move the seats up and, up and forward and back as you see me moving them here. This is actually nice and quiet too. Minus the birds, it seems pretty quiet here as you operate this and move it forward and back. So not a lot of noise. Okay, so pretty cool. Uh, I've seen some with a lot of noise, a lot of noise as you press the buttons and move the seats forward and backwards, and I'm not sure what the deal is there, uh, but I've seen that, okay? So because this is a seven-seater, it also includes the vents in the back, okay? So it has its own sort of climate system in the back. I'll try to get the camera in there so you can focus. Its own climate system in the back to get air to the rear seats. Everything else is pretty much identical. Again, minus the seat setup and the posts. You'll also know the back are the glossy backs. These are the original backs that the Model X came with. And this one has some wear on it, so you get to see the impact of having seats like that. Scratches and scuffs and things like that, which is why they went with more of the matte finish, just because it's easier to maintain, especially if you have kids in the back, which is typically where a lot of Model X owners are when they buy a Model X to get, you know, to accommodate kids or to accommodate pets, dogs, things like that, where they put the seats down. You'll also note that the original uh, knobs here for the Falcon Wing doors are a little bit different, a lot clunkier to operate, uh, where you have this little panel that pulls up and then it pushes down. Okay, can you see that? Pull it up to go up, pull it down to go down. And what I've noticed as we scroll over to the other side of the car here, what we've noticed is that uh, over time, these things start to fall apart, right? And it's hard to operate. It's hard to operate these things because they're starting to fall apart. And then I'm getting beat up. I'm getting beat up by the door as a result of that. So, you know, there's a scenario where these sort of uh, hooks come apart, right? So they fall apart. And that's kind of why they redesigned them, I believe, uh, just because of the nature of these. So now I can't even pull this up 
and put it back into place where it was. Even if I pull in here, I can't pull here. It just sort of doesn't wanna, wanna work with me. So not a good thing for this 2016 model. Uh, glad they sort of refined that. Uh, but let's, let's get inside. Let's talk about what's going on in the inside on the driver's side. So inside on the driver's side, again, same situation here. You have the, you have the uh, leather seats or leather-ish like seats. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Can't verify that right now. But they're also perforated and ventilated. And the ventilated mechanism uh, allows you to uh, suck air out as opposed to blow air out which means they're not as effective as traditional cool seats. Everything else the same, stalk setup is the same, wood paneling, the trim is the same. Jumping in the car, apologize for the dirty screen. We'll pop out a little bit just so you can see. Same setup, I'll close all these. So what you have here is uh, the same setup, looking at the VIN number here. You get to see how many miles, 70, 75,000 miles. I'll zoom in here so you can take a look at that. 75,000 miles here. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty extensive. And you can see it's a 1700 range number of VIN. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So everything else is the same. Fit and finish interior wise is the same. Same soft touch materials here. Same Alcantara blend here with Alcantara and the leather. I think they switched all the way to leather at the newer ones. But we'll look at those when we get to that point. And then everything else is the same, okay? Middle console is the same. Opening up in here has the places for the, pl the cup holders. This one obviously doesn't stay put because obviously it's a loner. And again, sort of the same situation, all right? So let's take a look at the menu. I'll zoom in here so you can take a look at that in more detail, okay? We've got seven seat configuration, so we now have the seat menu here. Uh, and this is indicative of the automated seat control that allows the seats to go forward and backwards because the newer models don't have this they have sort of a manual slide and fold scenario all right but this allows you to have control to modify the seats and control the seats the middle seat the front the front seat which also moves front seat moves with the back seat to give some more room for it to sit forward and again to be able to access that rear row okay so you can adjust those seats automatically you hear the motors spin up just for that one uh, but you can also move the middle seat as well to give it some more space. Okay, that moves up a little bit as well. And those go back. And you can also set up for easy entry. But again, it's not recommended if you have the child seat there because this seat does move forward, as does the driver's seat, as a result of moving the seat forward and backwards, which is kind of interesting. All right, this does have suspension. All right, nothing's different here with the suspension. Same thing with the lights. Nothing's different here. Uh, that's one thing about the Model X. The lights are pretty poor. Uh, because they're centralized in one place they don't move in different directions and they're not pointed in any specific place like a sort of a spotlight so they're just there uh, and really ineffective at nighttime one of the downsides of the model x uh, this has a hard hardware one so you don't have the cameras and the b pillars there as you saw with the walk around um, so it just has hardware one for autopilot standard autopilot okay everything else options here falcon wing door height they can be auto or they can be set to come up halfway or a quarter or three quarters of the way and stop all right everything else is the same all right so one of the things that is a little bit different here is the seat controls now again i said the front seats are ventilated and perforated uh, and so when you click on them it immediately goes to cool and if you don't want it to go cool it'll turn to hot okay so i'm going to keep it on cool and you can just toggle them like normal but this is something you won't see in the newer model x Again, but it's a suction instead of a blow. So it's not blowing cold air in your back. It's trying to suck away the moisture from your back. Not very effective, even at level three. I still feel like my back is as warm or as cool or as moist as it was before I turned these on. Nothing different here, in my opinion. And again, just a t-shirt right now. So if you had anything else on, a jacket or anything else, you're really not gonna feel these. So quite ineffective. I'm pretty sure that's the reason why Tesla got rid of them, plus the cost associated with them. Um, and issues and maintenance over time. So not a big fan of these in this current form. If they were to introduce a new one that would blow and you can really feel the impact of the cool, that'd be awesome. But let's take it out on the road. One of the big things that we want to understand is understand how this drives, just in a casual perspective. How does, it, how does it drive? What's the driving experience like in this car? What are the sounds that, that you hear? So let's take it out on the drive and, and do that. So as I get ready to put it into gear, 
Uh, one of the things I noticed are just lots of squeaks and rattles, lots of noises, lots of road noise. So let's put it in gear and go. So insulation is definitely better in the newer models. You hear that? Lots of squeaks and rattles. It's pretty bad. Yikes. They're coming from all over the place. Let's go this way. Pretty quiet, but there are a lot, definitely squeaks and rattles, specifically in the back area. I don't know if it's the axle. I don't know if it's, you know, one of the one of the wheels. I don't know what it is, but there's lots of squeaks and rattles or the chassis itself. I'm not sure. Uh, but what I do know is that uh, it's loud, louder than I than I'm used to. So I know first world problems, but it just feels like there are a lot of issues with these early bills that they rectified in about one year's time. Turn signals seem to be a bit loud. But I think I have Joe mode. I can enable Joe mode to make them a little softer. So that's no, no big deal. If I turn on the wipers, they're actually pretty quiet, surprisingly quiet. Uh, some wipers and Teslas are pretty loud where there's no engine noise to drown out the motors, but these are actually surprisingly very quiet. So I'm happy to see that. Ours are quiet as well. So no, no real disparity between the model year numbers uh, for 2018 and 2016. But to me, the biggest issue here is the amount of noise. So if you're in the market looking for a 2016 type of build, uh, these are things you should consider. The amount of noise, the fit and finish, the complexity of some of the features in this car and how they age over time, things you wanna consider. everywhere I turn. I, I hope the people outside don't hear this noise like I'm hearing it. But it's pretty bad. Now, again, this, if this is a mechanical issue, just out of neglect of it being a loner, then so be it. But I think some of the internal cabin issues are not just mechanical issues. Braking wise, brakes feel a little bit tighter, which is actually good. And again, it could be our brakes are a little bit softer because they're a little bit older and worn or these could have been replaced recently, but the brakes are pretty solid. But again, you hear all the rattling in the back. Motors are pretty quiet in this one. Ours are a little bit quieter, but uh, these aren't bad. Just give it a little bit of juice to see what it sounds like. A Little bit of stuttering on the wheel, probably the half shaft issue uh, because of the, the height of the car and the weight of the car. Everything else seems very familiar. It just seems a lot more refined from 2016 to 2018. That's sort of my big takeaway here so far. Let me switch to 2018 as this man comes out of the woods out of nowhere. As we switch to 2018 and then 2020, we'll, we'll really get a, get a chance to feel and see what the difference is. All right, winding down these roads, more squeaks, more rattles. I'll shut up so you can actually hear that. So there you go. So just thinking about would I buy one of these? Would I buy a 2016 Model X? Uh, the answer is no. The answer is no. I would probably offer something newer, 2017 even, or 2018, which has been refined significantly. 
And I think that's indicative of a lot of Tesla uh, products. When people ask, should they buy a pre-owned versus a new? Um, just know that the way that Tesla works, because they're excellent at software, they are new to hardware, new to manufacturing, relatively speaking, compared to their competitors. Uh, so they're always learning. And what you don't want to do is because, as you see here, uh, you don't want to go for some of the earlier VINs of products because they have a lots of issues and there's a lot of learning that, that's involved with Tesla's evolving over time. And they do it in short order. They, they do it really quickly. They have a very quick learning curve in terms of being able to understand what needs to be done and make those changes and integrate those changes adaptively into the, the actual product without having to go through model years. So in the middle of the year, they're making hundreds of different little small changes to refine the car. So that's why you always want to go for you always want to go for a more mature version of one of their products to get the best version of it. So if it's a Model S, get a Model S that's closer to now versus getting one that's you know older but a little bit but a lot cheaper. And the reason why it's cheaper is, or less expensive, I should say, uh, is because it, there's a lot of issues with it. Um, some of the technology doesn't age well over time, things like that. Okay, so if the price is, is equal. Like if this car costs the same amount as a, a new Model Y, I'd definitely get a Model Y over getting a car like this. If this car costs significant, half the price of a Model Y, then maybe you might want to consider it. But that's probably, probably not the case because these still hold their value pretty well. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to share on this one. Let's jump over to the 2018 Model X and compare that to this and then again to the 2020.